We already installed the database software and created the database listener. Now we are going to create an instance. Creating a database is no big deal. We could create 50 of them on a coffee break. The key is that we have to be mindful about what we are going to use this database for. We could change almost anything we'd like about this database after it's been created, but it's better if we get this right during creation and don't have to change anything afterwards. We could do this entirely using the command line, but I think it's better if we use Oracle's tools, especially if you are not familiar with Oracle databases. So let's run Oracle's database configuration assistant. Open a terminal, log in as root and run the xhost command as was shown here to enable Oracle user to start the BCA properly. Then log in as Oracle, change the directory to dollar sign oracle underscore home slash bin and execute dot slash dbca. Click next on the welcome screen. The operation we want to perform is create a database. To make this simple, we are mostly going to accept default values, so here choose general purpose transaction processing, fill global database name with otmdb, and SID should be automatically the same. Keep that Enterprise Manager checkbox ticked and don't change anything else here. We are going to use the same password for all admin accounts. Enter OTM63 as password, confirm and click Next. The installer will warn you that the password does not satisfy Oracle password policy, but since this is only a test server, we are not going to worry about that. On the storage type in database files locations screen, just click next. Same for flash recovery options, just click next. We won't be needing any sample schema, so just click next here. And on step 9 out of 11, we are going to make several changes. First off, change memory size to 1536. You can adjust this if you have more or less memory available to you. On the sizing tab, change processes to 300. There's another place we can change this, but let's do it here. Click on the character sets tab and change the database character set to Unicode. That's the middle option there. Now click on the all initialization parameters button and we'll change some of the more advanced settings of our database to make it suitable to OTM. It will open a new window. Click the Show Advanced Parameters to make them all visible to us. We have a list of the parameters we need to change. Those are extracted from OTM Installation Guide. Let's work them in alphabetical order. First, locate the parameter called db16k cache size. Copy and paste from the guide linked on the description to avoid mistakes. Next one is job queue process. Change it to 4. Increase open cursors to 3000. Find optimizer mode and change it to choose. Locate optimizer index caching and optimizer index cost adjustment and change both to 50. 
find PGA aggregate targets and change it to the value you'll find on the guide. Please note that this value is directly related to the RAM value we assign to the database, so if you have assigned more or less memory, change this parameter accordingly. Next up is processes. We just changed this so it should show up as 300 already. But check it just to be 100% sure. Find query rewrite integrity and change it to trusted. On session cached cursors, change the parameter value to 100. And finally, find statistics level and change it to all. We can click the close button now and go back to DBCA's main screen. Here select Generate Database Creation Scripts. This can be helpful if you run into issues and want to check how the database was created. And that's the same reason we have to save the database creation summary as an HTML file. On this screen you can also confirm if you've got everything right before clicking finish. Take a look at the summary here. It's possible to change anything after the instance has been created but it's much easier to change it now rather than after the fact. Some database instance changes are very awkward even for experienced DBAs, so take a moment to make sure everything is good before you proceed. When we click finish, the database creation will begin. When it's done, notice the Enterprise Manager address. We're going to test it now to make sure it's working properly. And in the process, I will show you a Firefox issue you'll have to deal with. Notice it doesn't work when I try to access Enterprise Manager's address. I get a secure connection failed error. That's not Oracle's fault, and the solution is quite simple. We just have to update Firefox. There's two ways to do that. Uh, first one being through the graphical interface, and second one is using yum on the command line. I'm going to show you here how to do it using the interface, but it would be much easier to just log in as root and run yum update Firefox.
Now that Firefox is up to date, we can access Enterprise Manager with no problem whatsoever. When Firefox claims the connection is unsecure, just click I understand the risks, then add an exception and we are good to go. You won't need to use Enterprise Manager much, but if you do, log in using System as User and OTM63 as Password. Now that we have the database server up and running, next up is WebLogic. But since we are running a 64-bit OS, we'll have to install JRocket first. And that's what we are going to do on the next video.